All right. I am finally joining the big kids club. This is my new NAS server. This is the Zimi Cube Pro, and I'm pretty stoked about it. It's a light speed NAS, personal cloud, and crafted for creativity. Just a heads up, this is not a technical video. I'm not a technical person. I'm, the last time I built a computer was maybe like 20 years ago. So it's been quite a few years since I've done it. But there are expansion slots for you to be able to use this server. And today we're going to go through the setup and walk through how to set it up. Now, why would somebody need a NAS or what are the benefits of it? Well, it's great for small teams. It's great for data redundancy because this specific NAS, you can do RAID 0, 1, and 5. And RAID 5 is what we're going to go with today. Again, not technical. There's plenty of information on there on it. I'm sure if I explain it to you, I'm going to mess it up. But RAID 5 is what we're going to format this to today. And what that is, is think about we're going to have three different drives on here. And between the drive storage that's on here, thinking of that being the foundation of our puzzle. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a puzzle, make a puzzle, and we're going to spread that across three different drives. Now, the security behind this is data corruption. For example, if you were using one drive right now and that failed, well, then you lost all the information. Now, when you're using RAID 5, all of your data is distributed across the three drives. So say drive two fails and you've lost everything on there. But because of data disparity between all of those drives, drive one and three, you can kind of look at those missing puzzle pieces from drive two and be like, okay, we know that this connects to this. So this must be what's inside of there. And it fills in the gaps for you. So that's why I want to go with RAID 5. But also the flexibility and the expansion of the Zemi Cube Pro that gives you, you could actually create this as a Plex server. So you can put all your videos on there and you can create it as a media server. You can even set it up as a file sharing server so people can send you files. Now, the other big feature that's huge for me is I'm always on the go. And sometimes I just need a file pulled up. I need to download that to my phone or need to review it or need to send that to somebody else. But via VPN, you can actually access your files on the server here on the go, whether it be from your phone or your iPad or on your computer. You can actually access the files on the go using a VPN. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. But before we get into all of that, let's tour what the ZMEQ Pro is. So let's take a look. So this is the front of the ZMEQ Pro. We've got the power button. You have an auxiliary out, USB-C, and two USB-A ports, giving you the flexibility to access the server from the front panel. Now, there's nothing on the left and the right, but I'll spin it for you. This is kind of where everything comes into play. So you've got a bunch of ports on the back here. You've got a power. That's where you plug in your power. You've got lightning speed USB-Cs on the back here. So you want to use these ports right here if you're plugging it directly into your computer for the fastest speeds. You've also got Ethernet ports on the top here. So you can set this up in your home network and have connectivity to this. You've also got USB-A ports and you have an HDMI so that you could actually plug a monitor into this, a keyboard and a mouse, and you can actually, you know, use this as a computer as well. And before we continue, I want to give a shout out to Zemi Cube for sending this out to me. This is a review unit, so thank you for sending this out to me. Appreciate you. Um, and this video is sponsored by Zemi Cube. Now we're just scraping the surface of what you can do with the Zemi Cube Pro. If you want to learn more about what the Zemi Cube Pro can do, I'll have a link to this product in the description below. Go check it out. I'm just going over surface level items today for the basic user like myself. Because there's a lot of technical videos out there on NAS, but they go way too in depth for me. And I appreciate all the knowledge that's out there, but I'm like, I'm like elementary level knowledge here. So today's video and setup is going to be on my basic elementary level. So those are pretty much the ports. All right, let's set this thing up here. Now, the first thing to know of what's important is to make sure this thing is not powered on. You want to make sure that no power is going to this before you start setting this up. Okay, so what we could do is we could remove the top. Okay, so from the top side, you actually have a couple of screws. You have, you have four on each wall, this side and this side here. Now, I've removed those screws so that I could open this up. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look inside. Like I've mentioned, there's a couple of more expansion opportunities in here for you. So you have these two expansion slots, like as I showed you in the back here. You can expand there. You've also got 256 gigabytes installed for you. And for all those technical people, just look around here. There's a bunch of stuff in there. But we're actually not going to access the top. I just wanted to show you that. And this just slides back on. Now, the front of the server, which has these ports right here, I haven't shown you all of it yet because this is where you're going to access the drives. So the first thing you want to do is remove this front grill cover. That's just on there with magnets. Now, you've got six hard disk drive slots. You can put six into here. But also, we can put into here is four NVMe SSDs. Now, in order to get these hard disk drive slots out, you press and that pops up. 
you pull this and you take out your drive like that. And, and then that's where you're going to put in the hard disk drive. I'm going to set this to the side just to show you how to do that in just a minute. Now we're actually going to install two hard disk drives. So I'll do it again. Remove that, set this to the side so we can look at that later. And then also we're going to put one NVMe SSD in right here. You unscrew this. There's also a cool light on here that you'll see it lights up. Now, when that's done being unscrewed, you just pull and this whole slot comes out. Now you'll see you have four slots right here for NVMe SSDs, one, two, three, and four. Let me put this over here. We're going to talk about how to install the drives. Okay. First, what we want to do is our hard disk drive. Now this is an eight terabyte hard disk drive. These are slower than the NVMe SSDs, but they're cheaper and they're larger. So you can use this to kind of store your data on. I like these just because I want to store the, a lot of data. So what you want to do is put this in here. Notice how there are screw holes right here on the side of the disk drive. I just line them up there. Now, a couple of things that are important to note is that Zemi Cube has provided a list of compatible drives for this. I would highly recommend going with their compatible disks because I did make the mistake of ordering the wrong one and it did not work. So I had to go through the hassle of sending it back, ordering the right ones, and it took me longer to make this video than I wanted to. So I would highly recommend going with their compatible disks that they have on their list. Also, another thing to note is that you get these screws that come with the HDD, but you have to use these screws that come with the Zemi Q Pro because they sit flush when they're in there. The ones that, the screws that come with it, they do screw in and they work, but they pop out a little bit so you can't actually slide it into the slot. So what we'll do is we'll just use the Zemi Q provided screws, put four of them on, one for each side. I know some of you might be asking like, well, why did he go with two eight terabyte HDDs and one NVMe SSD? Well, I mean, it's customizable to how you want it. That's just what I wanted to set mine up with. But you be you. Okay, this is going to go in slot number one. And then what we'll do is we'll just position this in first slot. And push that in. Okay, now that's in there. Next, let's install our second drive. You want to make sure that all of the ports are facing that way because that's what it's going to plug into once you get it in. We'll use the provided screws from Zemi Cube. Something to note about RAID 5 is that if you delete files, those aren't actually recoverable. So this safety is really only based on data corruption. In a RAID 5 NAS is data redundancy. It is not a backup system. So something to also keep in mind. Okay, we've got our last screw put in. We'll put this into slot 2. Push that in. Okay, now we have our two hard disk drives installed. We're now going to install our NVMe SSD. All I do is you have to slide this in at an angle, like so. And then the screw that comes provided in here, you see one, two, three. I put this one in. And we're just going to lock it down into place. Now that that's set, all you have to do is push this in. And let's screw this in to lock that into place. So now we're set up with the hardware. Let's um, now a couple of more things for initial setup. We are actually going to install with this included Thunderbolt 4 cable. We're going to go through the install process. Paste the back for you so you can see how I'm doing this. I'll plug in my Thunderbolt 4 into that first USB-C slot. And then power goes into here. And you can find everything that you need, including the cables and the Zemi Cube parts. So highly recommend do not toss this box out. That's where almost everything you need is going to be inside of. Okay, so let's get set up here. Okay, we'll get our computer here. Okay, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to Zemi Cube's website and install the Zemi Cube software. Once you have that installed, we're going to go into it from here. Okay, now the first thing that we want to do is launch the Zemi Cube software. You can go up here and you can do scan and connect to Zima. Now what this is going to do is going to scan all of my connections, especially ports, and since I have this plugged in, and it should appear here if it's scanning for Zemi Cube. And you'll see as it's scanning to connect, it has found our Zemi Cube Pro. Now that it's found it, let's connect. Now it's going to prompt me to log in. I have set this up before, so I'll put in my username and password. Now this is for the software to be able to access the Zemi Cube Pro. And again, as I mentioned before, since I set this up before, it gives me this welcome back screen. 
But for new setups, just go through the steps that it gives you prompted on screen. Okay, so this is the ZMeCube dashboard. You'll see all the apps that are currently installed here, as well as if you go to the App Store, you can actually really expand this server to be anything that you want it to be. There are so many different apps, so many different options. You know, you do you. But today we're just going to set up our NAS with RAID 5. Okay. Um, looking on the left side here, you get some system statuses between what's using the most RAM and CPU, and then also your storage here. So, and that's for the disk that is installed in the top that we looked at previously. And you can also see the bays that have our drives that we put in. So here's one and two. And then also here's that NVMe SSD. Off screen, I did also install another NVMe SSD right here. This is another four terabyte. But we're just going to do these three right here for this demo. So since I have four disks inserted, you'll see here that ZeniCube has detected my four disks. And you'll see a little blue icon on these as I have them on there. But you know that those are new. And then these remain grayed out. So I go to view. Now, there's a really nice RAID setup guide in here that it just walks through it for you, which is super nice. So from our four bays that we've inserted into, you've got our HDDs right here. We've got our SSDs that you see here. So if you also don't know anything about RAID, all you have to do is create RAID. And it gives you this recommendation here of which one is good for you. If you want faster speed, but it's low security, you need a minimum of two disks. For RAID 0, for RAID 1, you want more security, but not as much speed. There's RAID 2. Now the recommended, we're going to go with RAID 5 because of speed and security. And there's some good stats on there. So anyway, you need a minimum of three disks. We're going to use the three that we've installed. Ignore that fourth one. But we'll go here. We'll do next. And which ones do I want to use? So I want to use A. I also want to use 1 and 2, mirroring what I have here on the physical drive. Nice UI. So I have 4 here. I have 8 here and 8 here. It says 8 terabyte estimated available storage. This is what it writes to give those estimated puzzle pieces, those missing puzzle pieces that you have. So it knows as much information to fill that in. Let's do next. Let's name this. So let's call this Rogers 8 terabyte Zima cube. I'm aware of this. This is creating a RAID 5. Creating a RAID array will initialize the selected disk and all the files of the disk will be deleted. And so it's going to format and erase everything on there. We'll go to create. Okay, well done. It's all done. It's ready to go. It shows me disk 1, 2, and then A from the NVMe slot there. Now you can go to your files and you can actually view all the files right here. There they are. And we're all set. Our RAID is set up and our RAID is complete. Now let's view. And if I view it, you'll see it has B right here in blue because that has not yet been formatted or ready to be used on my Zima cube. And then you'll see these other three are in green. And look, as I hover over one, it shows you, it shows you all the ones that it's linked to. So let's talk about the different ways that you can access your files. So now if I go back to the home screen and I go to files, it now opens my Zima folders here. This is the disk space that is pre-installed with it, the 256 that's right at the top. But this is that new one right here, the eight terabyte that I mentioned. Do you get that data protection here? It's pretty cool. And so it just works like any WYSIWYG editor. This is the folder. You can drop files in here and so on. Okay, I'm going to go to upload files. And then, and I'm uploading this file here. It is a large file, but... This file transfer, just so you know, I am connected locally. I'm plugged into my server. So this is going to be the fastest transfer speed you'll see from the Samsung T9. Going use my computer and sending that to the Zemi cube. And yeah, that was all done. Six gigabytes just transferred just like that. Maybe not like that. Maybe more like a longer snap, but still pretty fast for six gigabytes. Okay, so that is on there. Now, a couple of other ways that I can access this is I can actually go to connect to server, put in this address into there. I can even bookmark this so I have it for later. I go to connect. Let's connect there. It'll prompt me with my username and password, the same one I used on the web browser to log in. And now you'll see that it asks me which volume do I want to mount to my computer to be able to access. So let's go with the eight terabyte created. Create that. And there is my folder. I have that accessible from my computer. This is cool. So also, if I wanted to drag files in there, I can do so 
by dragging files, just like it's a local folder on my computer. I could drag files into a folder, save them on there. And the one I'm dragging in there is a one gigabyte file, and that's how long it took. It's fast, it's on there. So that is one way to access this locally. I want to talk to you about another way of how to access this if you're just on a home network. But before we continue to talk about how to connect, let's get a couple of pieces of information that we need. So if you go to um, go to your settings right here, let's go to network. And down at the bottom, it's there's this remote access. So we want to be able to enable remote access to the Zima client. So what we're in right now is the Zima client. allows us to go in and control that. There is this toggle done. So we have that on. But also this network ID. Let's copy it. Copy to clipboard. Now let's save that somewhere because we're going to need that. Also, another piece of information that's important to know is if you go to Zima right here, you go to Zima Cube, this address right here, you're going to want to save. That is how we're going to connect to our server. So what we're going to do is let's eject all of this. We're going to let's close up all of our connections. I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to close out all of my Zima Cube software so that we know that, you know, this is a legit, pure connection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug my Thunderbolt connection. I've got this Ethernet cable here. I'm going to plug this into the back. And the other end of this cable, I actually have plugged straight into my modem and my router. So now that it's now on. You'll see now I'm not physically connected. It's wireless connection here. What I'll do in the finder, I'll go to go, connect to server, and let's connect. And then when this starts to connect, it'll ask me which of these do I want to connect to. Let's connect to our eight terabyte. And sometimes it may or may not prompt you for a password, but as you can see right here, I am now connected to my Zoom server. So that's the second way of how to connect is wirelessly local on a home network. So anyone can either be connected to your computer in two ways, Ethernet local or Thunderbolt local. Or the third way that we just talked about is wirelessly on the same network to connect to that server. Now, the last method I want to talk about is using your phone and being remote. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn off my Wi-Fi. And what we're going to do, this is going to be in two steps, is the first one is we're going to create a VPN to our home network. And then the second thing that we're going to do from there, and the second thing we're going to want to do is connect to that server the same way we did previously. Okay, so first thing you want to do is download this app called Zero Tier One. Now, once you have Zero Tier One, you can actually hit plus, and you connect via network ID. Now, that network ID that I saved previously from my Zima OS client, um, that's what we want to plug in here. So let's see, five. Okay, I'm connected via cellular, not connected to my home network, so I could be anywhere in the world that I have access to the internet. I'll tap on Add Network. We're going to allow the VPN configuration. Now it loads zero tier one. I want to toggle on my VPN connection. And if you have multiple VPNs set up on your phone, you want to make sure that's toggled on. So we're going to close out of that, go to Settings, and you'll see here, zero tier one. I'm connected there. It shows at the top my status is connected. Okay, so now I am connected VPN to my home network. The next thing we're going to do is go to the Files app. In the top right-hand corner, we'll tap on the three dots connect to server, and this same IP address that I have for this server here, we're going to type in. I'll tap on there. Let's go in as registered user. I have my username and password. Tap on next. And now you see we're connected to our server from our phone. So those are all of the ways to access your server. That's how you set up the server, pretty much setting up the server for dummies. That's what this video is because I'm a dummy. But if you want to learn more about ZumiCube, I'll have an affiliate link in the description below. I want to say thank you to ZumiCube for partnering with me on this video. It's awesome. I'm a big boy now. I have a NAS set up. And if you found value in this video, please don't be shy to like, comment, and share the video with your friends. Share the knowledge that we learned today. And if you want to follow along with me for more camera and tech journey, please hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.